All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Wellness Plug TV with your girl, Nadia by Nature. I'm always here to give you the best entrepreneurs in my area, especially, and I would like to shine light on them because of what they do and how they do it in our community. So I'm going to let him introduce himself. Dr. Julian, come on in. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. My name is Dr. Julian Armstead. Um, I'm a chiropractor here in the Dallas, uh, Texas area, um, close to the SMU um, mm -hmm. school. So um, as a chiropractor, one of the things that I, again, what my approach to it, especially with the new patient intake, for example, we call it the three T's of chiropractic. So we have our uh, trauma. So physical trauma, that can be anything from working out mm -hmm. uh, to car accidents or any sort of maybe physical trauma as a kid, broken bones, all that good stuff. Um, to thoughts, so all the emotional stresses, so that can be anything, financial stress, um, home stress, work stress, and then finally toxins, um, which I know we'll get into later today. Uh, we'll look at you know how you, what you ingest into your body. So are you taking any supplements? Uh, what mm -hmm. are your medications? What kind of food are you getting in? Um, and then giving, and then I like for people to kind of rank where they think they land, and then we'll talk about that sort of thing. Just because I think a lot of people as we know, but like don't know a lot about what they mm. eat um, and actually like the, where they're sourcing it from. And, and then we can get into all that specific stuff. But again, we'll, we usually look at that the first visit just to kind of see what are we working with, right? And so then uh, as chiropractors, we're looking at how we can balance out your nervous system, which is responsible mm. for everything, everything in the body, mm -hmm. skin, organs, muscle, anything you think of in the body, the, your nervous system is working between your brain right. and your spine. <laughs> Yeah, passing that right. information back and forth and so again that's the biggest thing we we take have an impact on as far as when we adjust someone we're looking to balance out that nervous system so it can respond to stressors um most efficiently uh when they do arise because stress is going to happen in life mm -hmm. so is is it just you that's there in your office i'm, I'm a one-man show here at I the Amsterdam health and chiropractic that clinic it's so <laughs> obvious because the thing is it's like you said I've never had an intake like that. Your introductory itself should, you know, kind of move people into where you are because um, most intakes are just you come in to get a service, you leaving, you don't gain mm -hmm. any information. This is so good, y'all. Y'all better tune in. I'm excited about this. So, yep, yep. Um, tell us like a little bit more about yourself specifically, and then uh -huh. go into details how you became the doctor. Cool. So back in 20, I want to say 2013. So I really got into fitness in my bachelor's degree. Um, I was actually pursuing a totally different major at the time, uh, hurt myself. And uh, basically the med I went to a medical doctor and there's like, here's some muscle, relax muscle relaxers. And that was the sum of, yeah. of that care, right? <laughs> it, helped oh, yeah. for, it helped for the time being to kind of uh, mediate the pain. But didn't really actually fix like the long term issue it kind of led to with some um, uh, even some little bit of rotation in my rib cage. And so I thought I always had kind of uneven looking like uh, core muscles. And I was like, what's going on? Like, this isn't like normal, right? And so it was maybe a few years later after I again switched majors to kinesiology and then was interning at a physical therapy clinic back in California where I'm originally from. And um, the physical therapist was like, yeah, I also got some like muscle fibers here that actually like didn't really heal very well. And so you're going to always kind of have this like unevenness, but here's something we can start to do to actually correct it. And so then that's why I was like, oh, okay. So there actually is more to like healthcare than mm. just kind of offering like medications to not really fix anything, but it just kind of get rid of the pain, but actually not getting down to the root cause of like why you have the pain in the first place. And so then that led me into, again, thinking I wanted to go to physical therapy um, but then, you know, moved out here, my wife and I moved out here and had some friends from church, our church actually go, Hey, have you ever thought about going to chiropractic school? Actually, uh, it sounds very similar. Let me hook you up with a few people, you know, to talk to and kind of see if this is maybe down your alley. Cause again, I had always been into sort of the holistic, you know, mm -hmm. nutrition, diet, exercise. It can't just be like one, one or the one other, other, but like it needs to be all, all together. That's right. And so um, met with this chiropractor and I was like, oh, this sounds like actually way more up my alley than that of a, a PT degree. And so um, found out that, you know, <laughs> there was a school right down the street actually at Parker University is where I went. Uh, so we live in Addison. So maybe a 15 minute drive from here and going, wow, like, okay. So I, I mean, literally that summer applied, got in. And this, so that was 20, 
17, graduated in 20, or sorry, let's see, I started in 2018, 2018, and then graduated at the December of 2021, so recently just graduated, and um, now we're, you know, running my own, own practice. <laughs> wow, mm -hmm. that is so awesome. I already said that I need to make my appointment as soon as possible <laughs> because my thing is, just like we spoke before, I am so into natural, like, medicine um talking about the yin and the yang i know you know what i'm talking about and mm -hmm. um you know um the dampness of the body and the dryness of the body and everything like that that goes into play with everything that we do and like you said the nervous system is like so sufficient <laughs> with me especially because the stuff that you know i had to take on but you know um you know even like not being adjusted i've been a dancer for you know all my life and mm -hmm. even the modeling I've done and stuff like that, I've yeah. learned that, you know, I've always had some type of imbalance, especially women wearing heels. That is something, you know, that, you know, <laughs> women need to know, like, don't wear the heels on the concrete, ladies. Let me tell you, if you want to be at the chiropractor every day, you're going to be just mm -hmm. like me. So mm -hmm. I, I try to, like, you know, keep that skill. So with that being said, that is so cool that you are implementing holistic care into chiropractic. You don't see that a lot. I haven't seen it um, very much at all or at all. Um, yeah. And this is good because um, you've already experienced something. That's what I like to hear. Like when you've experienced something and you can showcase it to your clients to yeah. where, you know, you understand them more, how they feel, mm -hmm. right? Mm hmm. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, I've had a pretty unique journey as far as working in healthcare. So, I mean, I've seen things, you know, as easy as like a knee replacement to, I used to work at UT, UT Southwestern in their acute therapy department after someone getting, you know, a new, a new heart put in, right. Having to get up. And so I've seen people at like their lowest of lows and highest of highs. And so I, I feel like, again, I've seen pretty much the worst of the worst. Right. <laughs> uh, be able to kind of relate and talk to people. And, and I was going to say, to your comment about uh, being able to t bring in the holistic side, right? So I'm a cash-based practice. When you so when the, a lot of them are insurance space, you have to stick to what insurance companies kind of dictate, and so which to me makes no sense. I mean, I know there's doctors on their boards and stuff like that that you know say, oh, they need this much care or not. Mm. But how how can you really judge someone based off of it? Mm. Because again, not, not, there's not a lot of intakes that do what I do where they actually get a full picture of the person and kind of being able to put, put them on a, a, a road. To, I have a road to progress map that I use with most of my patients. Again, when they come in to honestly judge them, like, I think you land here as far as you need, you need, you need some more care than right. typically here where again, insurance companies are going to say, okay, you're this old mm -hmm. uh, and you're male, female. Great. Okay. And you got this problem. You should be good with six visits. But what, what if it takes some longer than six visits because okay. it doesn't take any, it doesn't, they don't take into consideration what if they're eating horribly. Their body is constantly inflamed. They might need more than six right. visits to actually get better on top of needing to address the fact that they're not eating well. <laughs> wow. So it's I wouldn't say that's the big thing for me is why I wanted to not work with insurance companies because I honest, most of them don't have the best interest of the patient in mind. And again, for me, I want, I don't want to give someone a false expectation they're going to get better. Mm -hmm that mm -hmm. they're not going to actually get better if we don't address more of these other issues that are leading to why you have the issue in the first place. <laughs> why you're having issues in the first place. So I know for a fact, um, you know, chiropractic help with toxins to release the toxins from the body. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I get a lot of clients that have joint issues. So we already know that is what they're absorbing in their bodies, you know, putting into their bodies. But at the same time, you know, get to the root cause. Like, so people go for a quick fix all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and um, like you said, they'll go to medication, steroids and all those things. Right. And, yep. and, and that's what we hear on the typical, like, especially as an athlete, you know, I'm ballet instructor, ballet dancer, but, um, you know, even as an athlete, um and being athletic i've noticed that that's the first thing they put us on some type of medication something and i remember like it was yesterday my my shoulders were so inflamed from just like you know like constant movement you know what it's called and so you know um i had some crystal calcium build up they didn't okay. know that yeah. i knew that but they kept calling it oh well you're just having 
some issues with your joints, you know, right now. We're going to shoot you up. We're going to get you some. And I was so upset about that. It caused my body. I think that was what contributed more to the issue we talked about before. Yeah, and so yeah. I was just like, this is not a balance here. So I immediately started taking my natural precautions and went on on that road to get the inflammation out. It was so hard to flush those steroids out. It took almost like a year or two. Yeah, yeah, and especially for women where it's, you know, you where you guys kind of hold stress and mm. toxins, especially mm-hmm. in the gut region. <laughs> It's uh, it's one of those things where again, did you actually fix the issue? Well, hold on, why do we have again? Why do we have shoulder problems? Is it the actual movement that you're doing that's leading to the shoulder problems? Is there something you're you know you're eating that's causing the inflammation? And so again, the big thing is we we look at how to not only remove toxins out of what you're ingesting. So like one of the things that my, my wife and I do um, particularly is try to find ways to mitigate so that not necessarily don't use detergent but finding healthier mm. versions of detergent to use it's right yeah mm-hmm. and so just always kind of looking to see where we can start to again just modify right because we're not telling you to take these things out right but just finding better options that are available with the with the hopes that you can afford to do that but again you only have one body right that's right and so I, i'm all about investing in your body now so you, you're not hurting later, later. <laughs> right and so and, and i know that um people think we're thinking chiropractic care right now. The first thing you think of is back pain. Oh, my knee hurt. Oh, my neck hurt. All those things. I want to say it contributes to a weak immune system, other mm-hmm. things, migraines, mm-hmm. migraines, like literally, you know, not just, you know, um, releasing the toxins, but allergies, constipation. Yep. Yep. You'd be surprised how many people tell me, like, who came in with a migraine, who haven't had them for weeks mm. uh people who have gone to the bathroom after getting an adjustment because they've been so backed up i was just uh, gonna ask you that like that is my big deal because and, and look everybody know they call me the belly killer around dfw because i like to work with the gut but the main thing i i mean my adjustments is just not i don't just i'm talking about assessments uh you go to him for adjustments you come to me <laughs> for assessments but um yeah with the assessment um part it's crazy because that's one of the main things that i take on i let them know like hey like my first question is how often do you go and 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 then how essential like your services are to get that alignment do you know i know you know i'm telling y'all do you know like he said about the nervous system you know to where it affects your whole gut and everything well it affects you know i mean it takes place for everything but i'm just saying like if your nervous system is jacked up and then you know if your alignment is messed up too you can't go i mean that bottom probably not even lined up to go you know right i'm just being honest you know <laughs> yeah no you you would be surprised to find out like when people like cause i'll ask them like you know if, if, if i notice they kind of have like you know some gut stuff going on especially in their intake form like how often you go to the bathroom they'll say maybe once a day and you're like, oh, no, that's not normal. That's not that you need to be going more than that. Like that's not normal. Wow. Wait, you hear once a day. My I've heard clients, one or two times a day. No, my clients go once a week. Once a week. Wow. What? Wow. That's I would love to hear somebody say once a day. Love. Or one thing, you know, once or twice every, you know, two day, but it's still one of those things where it's just, that's not like normal. You need to, right. I mean, you need to be excreting like what we're intaking in. <laughs> on a regular basis. It's just like uh-huh. you don't want that garbage disposal to get too high up. You're going to have to start Mm-mm. flushing it down. <laughs> right? It's so crazy. But a, a lot of people don't look at it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, and it's one of the things too I love, especially when I adjust someone, You usually more often than not, we, so we have the parasympathetic nervous system. So like the rest and digest. Right. They almost go into a parasympathetic state after eating adjusted. Mm-hmm. And so they actually sleep for the first time or they have a nap mm-hmm. later in the middle. Of the, if they come in the middle of the day, have like one of the best naps. I'll, I'll get doc. That was one of the best naps I've had in years. Like, you know, as a child kind of nap. Right. And again, when you have sleep, sleep's important for the gut moving stuff as mm-hmm. well. Right. As far as recovery goes, because a lot of people mm-hmm. don't get sleep because they stay up all night on your phones, <laughs> you know, <laughs> 
and like again, doesn't allow our body to actually process again. Right. A lot of guts actually process stuff, and so it's such a all encompassing um, ordeal. Our health, our health is you, there's so much about it that we need to take care of. But again, I was I was getting my car fixed last week, and I was laughing because you know it costs you know this this much money to get it you know uh, the brakes done. And I was telling the, the lady, like, it's funny how people will spend $3,000 or whatever on their car, but they won't spend that on their actual body that they use every single day. Mm. And it's, it's like, you know, pulling teeth and, you know, tooth and nails mm. to try to help people, you know, take care of themselves. <laughs> but they'll go and spend that, like, eat, you know, in three seconds if their AC is broken in their car. And I get, yeah. I get and for, we're in Texas, it's fine. I get it. But at the same time, why are you so willing to spend it on an item that's going to deteriorate? probably going to replace it in 20 years, but mm -hmm. you won't spend that kind of money, it, you know, on your body. And at the end of the day, like LeBron and LeBron James and Tom Brady spend at least 15% of their income, at least mm. to take care of, to take care of their bodies. You, and just cause you're not like a top level athlete, you're a top level mom, dad, mm -hmm. you know, student, whatever you're doing in your job to be functioning optimally. Why aren't you spending at least that much money on your own healthcare? And then on top of that, like like you said, LeBron, is it, people have actual insurance on their bodies because some people have to work with their bodies. Like I had to have insurance on my body because I've been a dancer all you know all this time and a, a fitness instructor. A lot of people need to look into stuff like that as well because if when your body's not able to work, yep, then what? Not not like in my case, we're talking about like what you're talking about, like to where you know adjustments will no longer work. Assessments will no longer work. None of those things. Why would you wait until you get to that point to find or seek help? Like, seriously. So, like Dr. Julian is saying, like, you know, go get those things taken care of. And a lot of people look at those things like, like I said earlier about luxury care, you know, whatever. But those ex are essential things. Um, yep. Our body tends to get out of line. How often? Like, you know, like I'm pretty sure you've seen, you know, several people come in for say, well, I climb the ladder oh yeah i fell down <laughs> or you know i was walking in those hills so you know just mm -hmm. stuff like that and um you know just to be mindful that you know our bodies change just like when the weather changes just like when the doors change i feel like you know the body does that and i hear a lot of people saying well it's the weather changes my knee bad no you need to be adjusted <laughs> and it's it's trying to get preventative care in right. in front of the narrative of you need to have reactive care. We've lived in such a reactive care society where you only need to take care of getting your knee replaced because you've had bad knee mechanics or you're wearing bad shoes or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. You haven't been taking care of your knee. That's where you're getting the knee replacement. So we need to figure out how to take care of your knee in the future. Right. And so just it's just one of those things where you need to get preventative care in front mm -hmm. of the message. And ultimately, if insurance companies cared about you, they mm -hmm. would pay for these preventative measures. We don't want you to take care of yourself. That's not what we want. <laughs> that doesn't pay, right? Doesn't pay that right, doesn't, right, right, right. It doesn't pay to, to, to be well. At all. Like if everybody was well and I seen your comment about eating mango, then nobody would come <laughs> to nobody. You know, like at this point, you know, I am looking more into, you know, finding entrepreneurs too, like you said about how sleep is essential. And I know for a fact that it is as well. And I kind of tend to break mine up probably like five, maybe six hours. And then I do another like two hours. You know, I try to at least still get the eight hours in for a fact. But some days I do run off just just run, you know, yep. but, and I've noticed that. So, and you can tell that like it's, it becomes a mental thing. It, it affects everything in my body. And then it immediately I shut down. And the first thing, like you said, you go into sleep mode. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then back to what you're saying about the car situation it's crazy that, you know, um, I have a friend that just the other day, you know, um, you know, we were talking about like self care and everything for yourself, and then um, because she knows I'm big on self care, but she drives a Mercedes Benz, and and I don't discriminate what what type of car you drive, but you know I'm not gonna get anything that's super expensive to where I can't fix it. If I can't, and I love fixing all cars, I'm one of those <laughs> girls. If I can't touch this car and and make it run like I need to run, it's a problem. So I told her, and she just like, I gotta get this car fixed. It's leaking, and she know nothing about car, and and the first thing she was thinking about is getting her hair done 
Mm. I, I was kind of upset about that. I was like, because we tend to, like you said, everything has its place. Mm -hmm. Everything, mm -hmm. everything we do, everything we see, um, we got to be careful with those things. And yeah. when I was talking to her, you could just hear in her voice, like she was so much more concerned about the look of things yep. versus, you know, and, and I know for a fact, like, you know, um, you know, who she is and what she does. Um, she needs some care for like some serious self-care. And when I say self-care, I don't go for massages and all that stuff. I'm going to a chiropractor. I'm going to traditional medicine. I'm going to, you know, I'm doing all these essential things. And a lot of people around me are looking crazy because it's just like, wait a minute, we know you've been like this. Well, now you're going crazy with it because I'm, we're getting older. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. It's, it's just, it's one of those things, uh, it's, um, they, they call us, or the, in school we learn that we become kind of Dr. O's, when, mm -hmm. because people go, oh, you're, you're, oh, you're a chiropractor, uh, like, oh, you're, what kind of doctor are you, a chiropractor, oh, so you're not like, a, well, no, we just look at the body a different, in a different way, and so I always explain it as, if you have a fire alarm going off in your apartment, it's so loud, it's so annoying, if you take the batteries out, is the fire gone? Mm -mm. <laughs> And so at the end of the day, like at your health, are you just putting, you know, are you just taking the batteries out mm. and trying to, you know, again, the medication that's just numbing out, like just taking the, the noise away, the flame still, the flame's still going, the fire's still going, are you actually taking care of yourself? And it's so, it's so weird when you have to talk to people and start telling them like, you know, just little bits, right? You can't, you know, shoot a fountain of information at them, but just little, little bit after little bit right. of just little things, just the, like just getting getting little nuggets into their head to go oh so when they're you know again we, the skittles for example just little videos like that that was actually really funny how that, that <laughs> i kind of got went, went battle for a little bit but the fact that like again just having to talk and just a little bit about food here uh, a little bit about nutrition here a little bit about water you know all these little things that it, it, it accumulates because we do these things every single day so tell us about the skittle situation dr <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a quick thing on the Skittles. Uh, I'm so bummed about it. Cause I love Skittles. Like I, I'm a big mm. sweet. I'm a big sweet tooth guy. I love candy. Um, and so Skittles, basically the color that you see that to make it make, give it the rainbow color is uh, essentially just paint primer. Uh, literally, like what you would use for paint primer to make it look as glossy and bright as Skittles look. But why? Like, <laughs> what they need to be glossy for? Like, I'm putting them in my mouth. That's good stuff. My thing is, you know what? I noticed a change in the Skittles, too, because they used to be dull when we were smaller. And yep. they used to be a dull color, and which is was cool because we still seen the rainbow to us. We were kids. And that's who you are selling for. You know, you're selling it to us. So why are you worried about adults to where it's got to be all shiny and you know, everything? Mm -hmm. That's when you know that they're looking at the world and trying to just to, you know, the sparkly new stuff versus yeah. what works. It's Skittles been Skittles and Skittles been Skittles and nothing changed. So, like I was telling you in the comments, I um, uh, it just to just to piggyback on what he was saying, I went to the store the other day, and I've got all my healthy stuff up up there. I'm even talking about just like that. I found some aloe water, you know, some stuff because yeah. And so, um, the guy he had already missed me, and I asked him where things were on different aisles because like I don't. I shop uh, online now. And, uh, and, uh, so when I went in the store, I'm just like lost. Especially, especially like CVS and Walgreens and stuff like that. Like you don't know where stuff is. Oh, you know, no. the signs up there. I'm like, dude, whatever. Like show me, <laughs> point me to the way. I know the candy out though, right? So I am not really stuck on candy, but um, I'm kiddos. So they wanted some like candy that day. And I was like, do something different. I'm gonna get some 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 sour Skittles or some regular Skittles. And um, I was so upset because when I got up there after I put I pushed all the healthy stuff up there, and when I put the Skittles up there, he was just like snatched it away. Like I was thinking he was gonna ask me, "What do you need this for?" No, instead he was saying, "I can't sell you this." And so I was like, "Wait, what?" Like it was back there. Which what do you mean you can't sell me this? He's like, yeah. "It's on recall." And I was like, he said, it's a lot of stuff back there. There's some recall. And so I was just like, <laughs> okay, cool. You can have it. It's yep. crazy that, like you said, it was still in the stores. 
Nobody know this stuff. I don't know this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even, you know, we watched the news. We wouldn't know exactly like why what's going on. But just like Dr. Julian said, paint primer. Yeah. And, I mean, it's one of those things, too, where I so I don't really want to keep up with the news. Me neither. Because um, at the end of the day, if you want to really be informed, you need to do the research yourself. Um, right. And just like I tell patients when, when they're going to the grocery store, mm. you got you to look at the ingredients yourself. It, might, it mm. might say all these fancy things in the front of the packaging, but at the end of the day, you need to check what the actual ingredients are um, to see what's in it. And if you don't know the names of the first three ingredients, probably wow. shouldn't probably shouldn't be eating it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it's, and so with Skittles, I mean, it's just, it's funny here in the States how it's just, it's the way the, the FDA works is kind of a joke. I always tell people, mm. and, but if you look at the European, uh, there's this, I don't, there's like the ESFA or something like that. It's a different name. Basically their food, food administration, mm. actually like the food, if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of some of like the foods we have here, like Frosted Flakes and stuff like that, they, they take out all those chemicals over in, in Europe. Wow. My thing is why they can't do it here. I'm going to tell you why. Because they preserve it longer. So I, I think they like you being sick. You think so? Wait. I, I'm, I, thinking, I'm trying to be nice and say because they want to keep it on the shelves a little bit longer. Oh, no. Know. No. It's, it's, wow. it's about, I think, I think when you look at kind of the system, right, that if you get everyone kind of stuck in the health healthcare, mm -hmm. healthcare, right, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, system of being sick by eating all the stuff that's addictive and all the, you know, we think of the properties of a lot of these high fructose corn syrup and all, all those sorts of things, right? Yeah. It's, it keeps you addicted and it keeps you sick. That's true. That's true. Addiction and, and, and sickness goes together. I was just telling somebody. And then it, and then it gives you, gives you brain fog. And so you're not thinking about things. And so it's just all these sorts of things, right? Where you're not thinking about what's going on, you're staying sick. You just think that's like the normal, and everyone else is doing it. So why would that's you right. question? Why would you question the it? Issues. Right, right. I think I was talking about addiction the other day um, to a client. I was mentioning to her. She was telling me like somebody she knows that was addicted to drugs, and I said, um, I said we all have some type of addiction. And she kind of got upset. Kind of wait a minute, not me. I said you can be addicted to going to the gym. They can be, it's, it can be healthy addictions, but it can, it's still considered addiction. You can mm -hmm. uh, be addicted to, I'm addicted to smoothies and lemonades. <laughs> okay. If you want to know my addiction, that's my addiction. <laughs> um, um, you know, I don't smoke or drink. So those are my addictions. And those are my replacements for like candy. Like I don't really have a high tolerance for um, sweet stuff. Yeah. Like, literally I can eat like pancakes with no syrup literally and my kids look at me like i'm crazy like i don't want syrup on it i don't want butter it's got enough crap already in it if you're not making from scratch <laughs> anyway so i'm just like it's sweet enough you know my my, my palate is very clear um yeah. and i tell people the reason why it is because when i cleared so many so much toxins out of my body literally i went back into like baby mode where everything was so sensitive you know what i mean like yeah it's a good thing and it was a bad thing but i can tell you that the palate is clear i don't need i don't have the need for salts or sugars it's crazy so it's yeah. a part of an addiction like you so you literally had like a you, your sweet tooth is addiction it's just you know <laughs> yeah and so i was just having to find a way to replace that right and so i've sw switched it out to mango they've been on a man just a big mango kick and um i again haven't had a piece of like candy as far as like medical or not medically but uh laboratory made sort of stuff like skittles gotcha. and stuff like that but just switching over to things like dark chocolate almonds and just other other you know healthy alternatives um, right and mango is just as so good. good for dudes oh. right mm -hmm. right and, and for mm -hmm. men like it does so much for you know you guys like i used to always wonder why women tend to go towards pineapples and y'all go towards mango it's the same effect if you know what i mean yeah. So I was yeah. like, wow, okay, that's interesting. And you see a lot of Caribbean um um like people in their culture, they lean towards those um types of you know fruits and stuff as well. Like here, um, Americanized, we you know tend to go for strawberries and blueberries and, and those such of things, but mangoes is something that's you know essential to the body. Like I really 
got into it. I was like, okay. But a lot yeah. of people are, are um, allergic to those things, you know, or whatever. So it, I find it hard, you know, for you to be able to get those good things in, you know, like as a sweet tooth, like you said, you know, just to have something extra, you want to be able to um, get that whole like chart in, you know, you want to get yeah. that, you know, all the fruits in. Yeah. And, and it's one of the things I, I talk to patients about, again, about food is I always, I always try to have an answer for like a lot of different things. And so having, again, modifications for like, whether your, your fix is a salty chip. You know, I love mm. chips too. I love a good salty mm. chip. What is a healthy op? What's a, what's a healthier option? Again, going to be a little bit, little bit. Mean healthy. <laughs> you can you can actually find some pretty good pretzels as long as it has like actual sourdough in it. <laughs> Anywho, I, it's always having sort of like a, a modification. I call it modifications. Right. Did not. So I don't want to totally rehaul everything you mm -hmm. eat right off the bat. I just met you. Right. But here are the little nuggets. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna have to give you the hard truths. Mm -hmm. I give you like little. I call it the. I try to break down the pill into little pills. <laughs> <laughs> but just trying to make those slight modifications of changing it from an unhealthy, whether it's a Lay's chip to like a different gotcha. company that, you know, actually has the ingredients that is of a chip that what a chip should have. It should be salt, gotcha. potato, and then mm -hmm. like whatever the uh, ingredient you might have like barbecue or something. So whatever you need to make gotcha. to make that barbecue flavor, but just trying to, again, minimize the amount of ingredients, the list that's like, you know, like this big chunk into like this little line. <laughs> So far as wise, gut health, what, like, just give me some insight on gut health with chiropractic. Yeah. So I would say the biggest thing I do for, at least when I talk to patients about if, they, if they're coming in with a, a complaint about, you know, their gut health is trying to, again, obviously talking about what the food they eat, but as far as from a chiropractic perspective, being able to adjust that lum lumbosacral region. Um, can be really helpful as far as almost turning like the fuse back on to moving, mm. moving stuff in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> it's making it move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, I've had, again, patients, whether that's, you know, um, uh, having a little bit of flatulence after an adjustment or uh, getting up and having to go to the bathroom right away. Um, but again, just after getting that adjustment, because again, it's called the rest and digest phase for a reason. Right. And so when you're operating in that sympathetic, when you think about, we have the sympathetic and parasympathetic, right? So we have our fight or flight or rest and digest. We operate so oftenly in that fight or flight because stress to the body is stress to the body. So when you're on the 75 at 5 p.m. and you're sitting just back to back traffic, <laughs> that you're, you're, you're sitting in stress and your body doesn't know the difference between that or a lion, right? It's supposed, it to, op it's supposed to operate in the, in the way of, you know, if, if a lion's coming at you, you're, you're, blood pressure is going to go through the roof. You're going to go run. Your eyes are going to, you know, dilate open so you can see, like, where's the, the fastest escape route. We operate so often in that. And so it's taking away blood from our from our gut to use these other, you know, organs, which makes sense, right? Like, you want your lungs operating properly. You want yeah. your eyes to work. You don't, want, you don't want to be thinking about going to the bathroom. So your, your body purposely takes blood, you know, reserve from those mm -hmm. areas. Um, and information, they, they say that, uh, it doesn't want information necessarily going there or waste, like, you know, it wants to conserve energy for these other areas, like your, your muscles and stuff like that. And so we don't operate in the rest of the digest. And so often, more often than not, you see people get backed up because they're not ever in a really rest or digest phase. Because again, when we're sitting looking at our phones for hours mm -hmm. upon hours upon hours, you know, that blue light is just that simulating. Mm -hmm. And again, whether you're scrolling through your feed and it's just making it, causing stress right whatever you're you know you follow or to read twitter whatever the case is you're <laughs> you're not resting that when you're sitting on the couch looking at your phone getting stressed out you're not really resting and digesting netflix and chill is mm. rest, netflix and chill is not rest and digest <laughs> at all right <laughs> at all and i called um uh like a, a sit down job i'm not good at that i tried it um like just sitting down all mm -hmm. day, eight hours, and getting back into the car and driving an hour there, an hour back. I call it um, the uh, paralyzed syndrome. <laughs> the, because, like, you got to think about it. You're, you're the bottom of your legs are not moving at all throughout the day. So you're not getting no circulation. And I used to have a lot of people when I worked at a job like that, you know. Um, and um, 
I used to have a lot of people because they knew I was a fitness coach too. They just come to me and say, you know, look, I, my legs are swelling. I don't know what's going on. My body is causing, you know, more inflammation than regularly. You know, I think it's a job. <laughs> of course it's your job, but your job um, doesn't require you to sit. So um, I found it that other departments, like um, I worked in the legal department, stuff like that, they had this where they wouldn't, they didn't have any chairs. The desk was, you know, leveled up, and yeah. they would have the computers, and that's essential. Like literally, I had a lady that used to sit on a bounce ball like all day long. I mean, she was even pregnant and went all the way through, and I found that to be like exciting. I was like, huh. I need to work on this floor because I was helping a different floor. So I needed to get moving, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's what I did. So I, I had to set up a different way. It's just crazy. Yeah. And so actually one of the things I recommend all the time, people have to sit down for the job. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, it's like a little therapeutic pad you can throw on your chair. You kind of can like move back and forth just to get fluid in your disc, just so you're moving. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you have to sit for, I have an engineer I work with and, so he kind of has to sit for long hours at a time to work okay. on these different okay. projects and stuff. And so I'm like, all right, well, here's something we can do. Sit on the edge of your chair just so you're not sitting all the, all day long necessarily, like just kind of in a slump position, you know? Right. Um, but when you think about like, like the, the average, you know, worker who goes and sits from a, a nine to five job, they usually are rushing out of the house. Well, let's just go through a scenario, right? They're rushing out of the house. They have coffee in their hand. Have they had water yet? Probably not. So there's no, there's no, there's no fluid or hydration going in there. So they're, mm. they're, drinking, they're drinking their coffee. They're rushing to work. They're already stressed out about running late. Then they sit down from eight to 1230. They, they again, they didn't walk out with food. So they, they didn't prep any food the day before, you know, we, on the weekend. So they're eating out, probably eating a, a healthy salad, which has a, however many oh, thousands of calories. Talk about the healthy <laughs> salad. Keep going. That's right. And so then they, then they have their, you know, healthy, you know, 2000 calorie salad because all the dressing and everything else put on it. And then they come home and have, you know, they're, they're, they don't have anything to eat. So they're going to probably snack on some stuff and maybe order out. Mm, so they, most likely, right. Let's just say like the most common everyday occurrence. That's going to be the case. They didn't drink. I mean, I don't know what, what point they had water, right. <laughs> they probably maybe had a soda. They didn't use the restroom, right. They probably, they, they, yeah. Maybe they didn't use the restroom. They had maybe a soda instead of the water with their salad mm -hmm. or something. Or lemonade, iced tea, whatever, but no water at any point throughout the day they come home and you know maybe they have a drink with their taking out you know you know mm. fast food meal because they didn't have anything prepared because again the big thing i always talk about too is if you don't prepare you prepare to fail it's mm. <laughs> uh especially with food and again they 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 haven't ate well they aren't then they're probably not going to the gym either because they haven't been really mm -hmm. they don't they, they're tired yeah, they, they're tired they're, and they stay up till let's just say 10 o'clock got to get up for work at seven and then do the whole thing all over and over and over again. And then no wonder people then they're 30. So I'm 30 now. I've seen most, my, most of my people I, who are coming in are between 25 to 35 with these health issues. And you're like, you're way too young. And you have these health issues, but it's because of the, the, the American like dream of working the nine to five. Mm -hmm. So they come home and sit on their phones, look at Netflix, or watch Netflix and look at Instagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's crazy because like, you know, like I'm saying, like even just working at a nine to five, like brain is completely gone. Life is completely gone. Like, and that's why I said, even though I like, I enjoy working with entrepreneurs, I said, I might need to start swinging into working again with, you know, people who work nine to five because they don't have the time to plan how to be healthy or wellness lifestyle. They don't even understand what a wellness lifestyle looks like for them, yeah. right? Like so, yeah. you like you said, you have to prep like in advance because when those things comes, by the time you turn thirty or like you said, twenty five to thirty five, it's crazy. Nobody should be coming to us and having issues or chronic issues. Therefore, it's crazy. Mm -mm. And so again, I you know spend a lot of time in that that first visit. What is your wow. what does your meal prep look like? What is your like, roots? Do you have like planned days you're gonna go salads. work out? Uh, Those salads, just salads. You know what I mean? Like, what preparation do you put into like your week? Because again, if you because I know more people who put more more preparation into their work day to day or the week they like they're working on weekends to prepare for the mm -hmm. week. What, how much time do you put into yourself That's to right. plan out? All right, month. Let's see. We're gonna get an Excel sheet. 
Sunday, Sunday through Sunday, what do we want to eat for the week? What are snacks we're going to want to eat? So that we're not, you know, just kind of living on the fly. Right. And not just, well, my thing is I like to prioritize anyway, and I like to plan. Like, so throughout my day, it, and that's why, you know, I'm, I hover on a schedule and I'm not really just like the same schedule stuff every day, you know, whatever. Cause I like yeah. to do things different. I just like to make sure that I'm doing those things that I put on the schedule. Yeah. Cause some days you might want to wake up later. Some days, some other things might happen. If I can't get from this destination, that, that destination, if a patient goes, you know, longer, a client goes longer than, you know, than usual, those things has to be adjusted. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but you still do those things. Those things are essential to your life. But what I see a lot, just like I'm sure you see a lot, they don't prep the plan or plan to, you know, prep at all. And mm -hmm. so that's why you said you have to take those fast consumptions. Everything is coming in fast. If you notice, like everything is coming in fast and it's crazy. Yeah. Like the fast food, um, you know, you moving fast, taking the kids to basketball, you know, practice all these things, you know, Oh, I got to walk the dog real fast. You know, everything is real fast, you know, because you don't even make time for yourself that day. Then your time for yourself is like you said, hunched over or watching Netflix or doing something, take some time to breathe. Yep. yep. So yeah, plan and put into your lifestyle. I don't know how often you suggest that they need to come see chiropractic care. That is essential. So it, it, it will depend. So usually again, I'll have a good intake of kind of like where someone falls mm -hmm. on whether they need like a, so I usually do two kind of modes of care, whether it's someone who needs to be on a treatment plan and then kind of transition them into a wellness membership. And then I have people who are on wellness memberships. You just need a few visits throughout the, the week, or the, I guess you say like the month overall, just so they, you know, get the best, most bang for their buck as far as how much they're paying for package wise. But also again, it's going to kind of, I have that open. If you're on wellness that you can kind of come in on your life allows you to sort of thing. Uh, where it's more of a care plan. We're, we're trying to get you out of the hole <laughs> so you can walk on your own. Right. And why would you not want to walk on your own? My thing is, I, I've i been in fitness for almost 20 years. Let me tell you one thing I tell people all the time, because I see all these fitness gurus nowadays. You know, they knew <laughs> back when I learned, um, you know, um, fitness was complete self-care. Fitness was taking care of yourself. Like it wasn't all extreme. You ain't got to be all up in the gym showing out, showing videos and stuff. <laughs> it was literally, you know, um, I learned, you know, a different way. So, um, you know, as a fitness trainer, I tell them all the time, just like, look, take those those little things, you know, and 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 live by them and go by them and, and be consistent with it. It's all about being consistent, right? Like that's the that's the biggest key to the puzzle of life it's just consistency and so it's one of those things where i'm always posting on my story of me doing the same exact thing and people are always like amazed but it's just that's that's how you do it though <laughs> it's not it's nothing flashy it's nothing special it's doing the same thing over and that that's the the real treat i think is being able to do the same thing over and over again and finding the joy in doing it right no they're serious but yeah I, for the most part you know i just want to Make sure that our audience understand how essential it is to take care of yourself. Just be mindful of everything. Like Dr. Julian said, I've never seen anybody in chiropractic because I have I have a few friends that are in chiropractic and they I've never seen the intake form. I've never seen um, like a, a plan, you know, to get you to where from where you are to where you need to be. You know, a, a lot of us, we want to plan. We want to plan. Uh, we yeah. want to be in a different space in our lives, but we don't know the steps. So it's good that you are already implementing those things and putting those things in perspective for your clients. Because, you know, if if not, then they'll go and look for somebody else. Like yeah. eventually that's that's what it, it, it boils down to. And then I always tell people like my goal is to always give you the tools and education to then go apply it. I want you to be I want you to be a independent patient not a dependent on me patient that's right that's what i was about to say about fitness that's that was the end game of my um <laughs> of my yeah because like um and being in fitness for all those years i don't want you to stay with me forever i want you to grow you when you start you you crawl you walk you run right away from me. I want you to be consistent. I want you to be consistent. I want you to run right away from me. I don't want you to need me anymore. Um, a lot of um, these new fitness instructors, they, you know, 
Well, I want them to stay with me for a year or two. If they stay with you for a year or two, then you're not doing or giving them what they need. Yeah. And I get there's going to be people who want like the additional motivation and stuff. But again, that's not that's not me. Not but in the fitness world. Chiropractic, you need to go to uh, for years to come. This is like longevity. We're not and, talking about you. <laughs> And we, and we have that conversation, right? There's going to be there's, there's going to be something things that come along the path that cause a little relapses, right? right, right, right. Um, and that's expected. So I want to be your chiropractor for life, and not sense if things do pop up where you hurt right. yourself or you're doing this or that. Right. Sure, come see me. But like, I, I my goal in all of our sessions is to give you enough valuable information right. and tools to keep your body so up. that when we finish that care plan, again we can we can talk about going on wellness and kind of just maintaining mm -hmm. that maintaining wellness. Great. Well, I'll see you, you know, once a week. Mm -hmm. And then slowly digress. Because my goal is always to, the better you're getting, the less I'm seeing you. And I know from a business perspective, that's like. That's cool. That, that's, well, that, that's like not smart, right? Like you're not going to make any money. It's not if smart, but it's cool. It's smart. So, it's so my, my thing again is just, I, I don't want to see you forever. I mean, don't I love my patients, but <laughs> I want you to get better on your own and give you the tools to go like take care of the world yourself like <laughs> but then that's where the review comes in and then other people notice that oh i've been going to dr julian and look y'all remember where i come from here i am now and yeah. so those reviews reflect on its own like you said it is it, you don't have to be with me forever as long as i've helped you and assist mm -hmm. you take yeah. care of the prime issue we've we've went through our plan yeah yeah so again i always have here's where you are here's where i'd like to get with you and given again your where you're at in life as far as lifestyle and stuff mm. like that is how long i think it's going to take to get from point a to point b right. here's here's plan a let's let's get after it <laughs> but again i always have the expectation there's going to be here's things that you're going to have to do though like if you don't do these things i'm going to see you for a lot longer I have, and don't tell me, oh, well, I don't know, because I have patients who do the things I tell them to do. They get better than the ones who don't do what I tell them to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I, I, I think I see that a lot, too. Like, they'll know exactly what to do, and then they go, wait. What? Like, I have a client right now. I just put a plan together for a good health. She knows she has some real issues. She only goes to the restroom once a week and maybe twice a month. Mm. It's not funny. Mm. It's just that when you know yeah. something's wrong with you and you don't even care to really just go and get the help that's needed. So um, we talked about it and I did the assessment and everything. And she said, you know what? Thought about it. I don't think I'm ready for that because she don't want to stop anything and she don't want to start anything. Well, you're not going to see any results. Yeah. Anytime soon. Yeah. When you start putting the responsibility on on them, it's mm -hmm. interesting to see like the pushback mm -hmm. of like, what do you mean I have to like take do care stuff? of myself? <laughs> what do you mean I have to drink water? Oh my goodness! I, I know. know. I know. Yeah. I, I know it's the hard pill to swallow, and again, when you watch <laughs> the news and telling you that they can take care of you and all this other stuff, no, you got to take you got to take care of you. <laughs> and that's with everything that it comes with. That means financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, you better be able to take care of yourself. And so, and that's that's a key part. Um, what would you say about like far as wise is emotional um, health? I know you. You say something about it at the beginning, like yeah, um, yeah. So again, to so the emotional side of our thoughts, right, and how we, mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess take take different stressors on. So again, whether that's not being able to pay for a bill that's about to come up, mm -hmm. or you know, also maybe get, almost getting hit by a car, something, whatever the stressor is, like kind of the emotional side. Um, again, we'll talk about that as far as like why is like your work and home life a four mm -hmm. out of five in stress. Gotcha. Why is your finance? Why is your finances a stressor? Why is your family stressful? And like, ask the question of like, why? Like, what? What's going on? I, I'd like to know. I mean, I might not be able to necessarily help, but let's talk about it, right? Um, to see like what what is like causing this problem. What can we do to try to fix it? Because right. if, if that's something you can't fix, like, and you're gonna have this constant stressor, like, oh, there's only right. so much help I'm gonna be able to help you with. Because right. again, if you go when you go home and leave, like, leave the office. 
you're yeah. going to go back, you're going to go back into that, that sympathetic mm-hmm. nervous mm-hmm. system, fight or flight response. Mm-hmm. I mean that you're, you're not going to get better. So we got to figure out like, you know, why you have that stressor in the first place and what we can do to try to like fix it. Cause again, emotional stress, we are, I, I've seen it to where some people like just have like the biggest relief. It's I mean, it's tension because their body does take on that emotional stress. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's that release of tension that they've been holding up, not from like necessarily um, like a musculoskeletal issue, but just gotcha. that re- like tension and the, they've had the weight in their shoulders for the mm. last 15 years dealing with whatever problem they've been dealing with. And now like it's gone and to see them just laughing or like oh. tearing up or whatever the case is, it's really a really special experience when you do have those patients who have that that emotional release from getting an adjustment. Right. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Like to even, like you just said, just to see where they came from in general. And so with where they came from, what are like your starting packages? Like not packages, like what if I want to come see you right now, okay. I don't know nothing about you, you, your greatness yet. <laughs> I'm just, you know, coming in to see you. Okay, so you're, you're not going to believe this. So, I and mean, it's crazy, like, <laughs> again, when I tell people this initial price, again, I'm three months in now. So I'm offering my new patient promotion, uh, $48. Normally, once once the, once the demand gets there, it's going to be 120 That's like the value I have it set at. Not right sure. now for $48, gets you that initial intake. So it's probably about an hour long where we'll, again, talk to your intake. Depending on how difficult or not difficult it is, it can be 20 to 40 minutes. And then we do a digital posture exam to see, like, again, not my personal opinion of what your posture looks like, but what your actual posture looks like. Wow. Um, and so we go and it's very, very, uh, specific as far as different landmarks we use to see where we have maybe that forward head, forward head posture going, or right. really maybe having that additional like extension in your low back. Cause you don't realize, you know, you're trying to stick your butt out or whatever the case may be leading into some like low back pain. You know, we, we have a, a objective way to look at that and then we'll do the physical exam, which, you know, is a, uh, compilation of different neurological exams, uh, orthopedic test, and then kind of feeling around different tissues where we might have an area of complaint or like mm-hmm. I look at your, when I'm looking at your posture going, oh, that looks really tight. Let's go check that out. I, you know, make my own little mental notes. And then as long as there's no like red flags, usually that's whether that's like any sort of concern of fracture or maybe mm-hmm. like if you have rheumatoid arthritis, we might need to get a cervical x-ray, something like that. Mm-hmm. I'll just do that same visit. And wow. so that's, that's $48 of an hour of my time to go th- really, again, go through your whole case history Oh. Uh, well, again, while it's, it's good. Cause once, once the demand is there, it's going back to the one twenty. <laughs> that's right. And so the, and, and I think that's, that's good. You can't beat that with bad. And then that gets you another visit, day two visit where we, again, we go, it's called the, I call it the exam follow up. So we'll talk about how the adjustment was. I'll basically have, here's your, here's your plan for you. I have a plan A, plan B, and we're going to talk about where I think you are, where I want to get you, how, where I want to get you, how long I think it should take, how much it's going to cost. And go from there. And then you can either, yeah. and then you don't have to pay anything for that visit. That's already, it's covered in that, the initial mm-hmm. fee. And then you can decide to go with, forward with care or not. The price isn't going to change if you walk out the door. It's not like one of those like sales tricks sort of deal. Here's yeah. what you got. I, again, and I'm, I'm super transparent about anything money wise. Again, I'm the business owner, which I love. So I can be as transparent uh, and very, very direct about how things are and no, no tricks. <laughs> Right. No tricks at all. But that's so awesome that you have like those those things in I'm telling you in alignment because um, I have not been to nobody. I'm going to say it again. Y'all need to look into Dr. Julian because I have not went to chiropractor that care yet. Uh, the most that I receive as far as why is this chiropractic care? Because like I said, I'm a dancer. So I was going like regularly at, at some point. Yeah. And um and the most I received in care was me walking in, getting an x-ray, not necessarily um, like making mental notes or, you know, looking at my body and saying, hey, this and that. But for the most part, it just say, oh, well, just come on in. I just looked at your x-ray. OK, look, you know, let's get the popping, you know, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, OK. And mm-hmm. I haven't even told you what was wrong with me. Um, really pretty much like um, did a real intake, you know. Um, they just ask you, what's your problem? Here, you circle it here. And what is it causing? Is it causing pains and needle or yep. whatever? And I'm like, I didn't, I'm not in a car accident. I don't need 
that's not why I'm here. I'm here, you know, for my health, overall health. I'm having some issues. And one last question I was going to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So why are, because uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Why do they adjust when you're having chest pains? Why do they adjust the back? The mid, the mid back region. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you look at the nerves on a nervous system, mm -hmm. that particular area, the, the thoracic region, you have nerves that go to your heart. Again, I'm not really sure why initially adjusting the back for like chest pain. I would be more curious about why you have chest pain to begin with. <laughs> uh, but you have nerves or whatever that innervate our heart if you go to the back region. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I would want to know why you have like the chest pains or like, what, kind of, you what kind of chest pains do you have? <laughs> the thing is, is because I've heard it's just what I've heard. It was just from a regular doctor. He was just like, when you have back pain, it's due to, and, and, and I, in my case, it was, it was due to, uh, um, like, um, what is this car right here? My rib cage. And it mm -hmm. was inflamed. Like I was yeah. telling you, yeah. it was inflamed and I can't think of the word where it's called right now. Oh, um, it started with a C, I, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, but, uh, costochondritis? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I kept thinking, I got that. And then I thought, you know, when you have the hole in the middle of the chest where it separates from the, the stomach um, and the ribs and everything is different. It's like a hole. Can't think of what it is called right now off the okay. top. But he kept saying, well, you need to get your back adjusted. Now, what I was saying about the IMT um you know transition you know medicine you know that they were doing with the fascia yeah it it did help it was weird because they didn't never touch up in here of course they just like no we're not doing that but they did something in the back region i think it was like a, a like a t4 you know something like that yeah where they yeah. kind of mess around with it and it it like you was mentioning earlier about the rib cage it uplifted it's crazy yeah. yeah so i mean it can help if it was a like more of a rib issue again i would want to maybe figure out where it does hurt in the right. chest of that. I want to make sure that we're referring you to the right person in case it is an actual <laughs> like cardiovascular issue. Cause again, that's, that's not good. my uh, specialty. <laughs> I'm going to send you to a medical doctor. If you got some chest pains going on, <laughs> that we can't right. figure it out here in the office. Um, but again, classic chondritis can actually be helpful. Because again, I always tell people like the mid back, we have all of our, our ribs attached to our thoracic spine. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly breathing up, you know, the ribs are moving up and down. And so it's one of those adjustments that you probably kind of need for life. It's one unfortunate because you can I can't mm. I can't control your mm. rib muscles. Mm. You you need them to move. Right. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, they were not <laughs> moving. Like literally, I was just like this, and I was like, "What is going on?" Like I couldn't breathe, and I yeah. was wondering why. Like they wouldn't expand like I expected to, and it and it could have been like. Like you mentioned earlier, it could have been a lot of stress that was just tensing in into you know and causing more inflammation and and you know problems. But at yeah. the same time, I knew for a fact that this was my chest, and you are you up here chest in my back. Like I'm about to fight you. Like I I was getting upset because I'm in my mind I'm thinking this I don't feel good, and I kept going back to my you know my um, primary care, and I'm just like, look, I'm not feeling good. I feel yeah. good until she actually put me into um, IMT. But yeah. before then, it was horrible. Like I was telling you before that, you know, if it wasn't for chiropractic care, along with, you know, um, helping release the toxin and move the toxins, I don't know where I'd be today. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. So we do do adjustments as well at the office, but um, for most kind of musculoskeletal issues, we take a three-part approach. So we have adjustments. Mm -hmm. We do, um, I have some soft tissue work that I do. So I'm familiar, familiar with Graston where it's mm -hmm. Eric Washaw is kind of using an, an instrument uh -huh. assisted um, yeah. tool to help. Again, it's not as comfortable as like your, what you think of like oh, a traditional no, massage? <laughs> no. but I, I like it because it gets results and that's my goal to help yeah. you get better and get results. Yeah, you get results. And again, my goal is to not see you as much as I have to, if I can get okay. you out in three days versus six. And then I do, my big thing is exercises because mm. those are the one thing, yes, the one thing you can have control over and can do at home if as long as you're doing that to keep that muscle tissue nice and loose you shouldn't have to be mm, seeing me as much amazing. over a period of time and so the thing i do again with treatment care plans again i i know this is crazy so extra when i do exercises not only do i coach you in the clinic on how to do them before i send you out so i'm not a big fan of you just me watching you doing them in here because that's i feel that's a waste mm -hmm. of everyone's time mm -hmm. at the end of the day like just because you're, you're doing them because you 
have to do them not because you want to do them. That's right. So I, I coach them in there. You you do a few reps, make sure it looks good, and then you know send you on your way. But I will record myself doing the exercises. Wow. Like, throw captions in there again, talking about reps and sets. I want you want you specifically to be doing talking about what muscles you should, you should be contracting. Talk about your specific um, mm-hmm. area of fault that you fall into. And then you have that for life. As long as you don't delete the video, you have that. And so instead of me passing you a piece of paper with some exercises that most people probably will give you a generalized piece of paper, here's your exercises of some p- random person on the picture. You have me doing them mm-hmm. and then reminding you all the things you maybe were doing wrong or need to correct. And then how, again, how to go about doing it. So if you ever fall or, you know, you stop, do, you stop doing them after a while, but you, you got better, you go, oh, I'll have that video and I can get, remind myself to get back on track. And then that's again, a life tool as long as you don't get rid of it. Wow, like that's a lot for $48, like where do I sign up? But everybody needs to be signing up. I mean, because I mean, and even a full $120 um, for you to show me some moves that keep me, like the maintenance up, like you said, just like a maintenance of a car or anything else, you know, you want to keep those things up because, um, you know, your body, you got to use regularly, just like you said before, it's crazy. That is so awesome. So I want you to give us a word of advice, whether if it's on like entrepreneurship, health, chiropractic, anything that you can think of that you can leave us out with. So my, I think, piece of advice I would give is if you're going to be preaching something, you better be practicing it. Mm-hmm. So for me, if I'm going to be giving patients advice on exercise, nutrition, you better believe I'm doing it. I've always said you need to look the part to, to actually preach the part. Um, I never understood, you know, those, again, there's other doctors mm. out there who are into health, right? But you look at them and you go, well, mm. do, you, do you take your own advice, like, seriously? Right. And so if you're going to practice what you preach, you better start, you better be practicing it. And like, whatever, what, whatever that, like, looks like in your day-to-day, you need to figure out a way to practice it. Because I'm not, I, I won't take you seriously. And no one else will either. And so if you're an entrepreneur, again, whatever it is that you do or the service you provide, I hope you're you're practicing it or get on it now. <laughs> right. Because it, you sound like me. I tell people that all the time and I have people that come to me too, like new entrepreneurs, you know, to say, hey, you know, what do you think about X, Y, Z? Because they know I've been in the game a little while. So yeah. they go and ask questions. I'm just like, you don't do that. I, I, why do you say I don't do it? You don't look like you do it. You don't act like you do it. You don't wear those clothes like you do it. You know, you have people sell clothes and they never dressed up. You got people that are makeup artists. You don't ever see them have makeup on. They say, well, I don't wear makeup. I just want to do it. And, and sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you do get entrepreneurs that went through these scale of things that don't want to, you know, be a like part of for themselves anymore or they have outgrown it. But yeah. I'm just like, Show me something, you know. You can't tell me, girl, you look cute with eyelashes, and then you don't wear them either. Like, I'm confused. Like, let me know, you know, or either just like, oh, well, you know, you do hair, or you you have, oh, I have growing hands, you know. You hear that a lot. I have growing hands and healing hands. Are you healed? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have some friends that's like that. I'm telling you, it's crazy. (laughs) And I get I when people when they ask me about these, oh these exercises are so hard or you know do you actually do them yourself I do them all the time the stuff I'm the stuff I'm prescribing you better believe I've tried it make sure it, it works gets the job done right and then you don't have to use it all the time it's just like I was telling you about the products that I have right like I don't and I'm not sick anymore so I don't have to use these things on a consistent basis now don't get me wrong because yeah. um everybody have some um some detox and they need to do on a regular basis you know whatever and especially the detox that I do is with your lymphatics it's the biggest way to de- detox rather than just going through oh I just need to poop no I already do that regularly see I'm not yeah. trying to get you to poop regularly you should be doing Doing it anyway, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that, like you said, the background of it, the the parts that you know that caused it, you know, the root issues of it, yeah. is what we're correcting. I don't care about the yeah. Rest we're of it. we're changing the foundation, making sure the foundation is solid, and then again, you can grow from there. But we need to re- right. we need to re- change the found your whole foundation, <laughs> and then again, again, so again, back to the my piece of advice that practice what you preach, 
Um, cause people will catch you on the hypocrisy. And if you're not genuine enough, like that's, it, you have to practice what you preach to, I think, showcase that. That's right. And then tell them how to reach you, where to reach you on your platforms. All right. So, uh, on Instagram, I am on, you can find me at Dr. Julian Armstead. So at Dr. Julian Armstead. And then, uh, my website is just www.armsteadcairo.com. And those are pretty much the two forms of media you can reach me at. Again, Instagram is, again, a really cool place to reach me at because I actually will uh, reach out to you. Um, and, you, again, I send a personalized video message saying, hey, thanks for whether follow, liking, whatever the case is. Check those hidden requests. I know that sometimes don't get you know put in the general or, or primary. But uh, Instagram is a great way, definitely the best place to reach me um, if you want to get to know your doctor before you even come to the office. Well, y'all heard it first. Do you hear me, DMW? chiropractor you better get it in especially he's prone to this holistic care wellness and he's for witness he look well he's showcasing y'all right here <laughs> the forest not just talking about it go look at him you know on his platforms to check him out and actually go inside the office and get the care that you need so again you know thank you for being on y'all go and follow me on instagram facebook twitter I'm there, naughty by nature. And make sure that you're always checking out the Wellness Plug for the best entrepreneurs. I'm only going to put the best on here so you can see what they're doing <laughs> and how they're doing it for their communities where they can share their stories. And I appreciate you. And thank you so much for coming on.